Hey BYS, we're here to talk about sports injuries in soccer today. I'm Phil Forsyth, I'm a doctor of physical therapy with the Jackson Clinics, and we're going to go over a couple of the most common soccer injuries and what you can do to know whether or not you should see a physician, a physical therapist, or you can do it on your own. First up today, we're going to be talking about a hamstring strain. Hamstring strains are one of the most common soccer related injuries, and they're typically involved with a lot of acceleration and cutting movements that are overloaded and you end up with an injury. So we're gonna tackle how to identify when you should go see a physician, a physical therapist, or whether you can handle that on your own. We've got our guy, Ben, here, and we're gonna take a look at some hamstring-related movements. First thing I'm gonna have you do is we're gonna just assess how the hamstring feels first. Active motion, passive motion, and then we're gonna do what we call selective tissue tension testing, and we're gonna actually load the hamstring a little bit and see how everything feels. That kind of forms how we're gonna identify whether or not who you should see about the injury. All right, Ben, so. First thing, I just want to check out a little bit on flexibility and standing. I'm going to have you reach down, try and touch your toes. For a lot of people, this is going to feel like a pretty intense stretch in the hamstrings. What we're looking for here is does it actively reproduce any of their pain? When you lengthen a muscle, when it's injured, it will tend to be pretty painful. And we're looking to see if that is too much for you or if it's something where you can just kind of work your way through it. Ben, what did you feel on that? A little bit of stretch here. A little bit of a stretch there. All right, so once we identify, okay, the hamstring is what we're suspecting, let's take a look at it a little closer. So Ben, I'm gonna have you lay on the ground for me here. Now there's a couple of key spots that we're gonna wanna identify with any kind of muscle. You wanna identify where it inserts. The hamstring is a two joint muscle. It has hip and knee function. So we wanna make sure that we're assessing both of those as well as the major muscle belly itself. So Ben, I'm gonna to start to work my way through here. Let me know if there's anything too tender in there. Starting high, pushing in. We're gonna work the outside muscle first, your biceps femoris, and we're gonna see how that feels. How you feeling in there, Ben? Good. As you work your way all the way down, you wanna check in on both of the attachment sites. So we've got one here, give that a wiggle. Any issue with that? Wonderful. Then you're also gonna come and work through the medial hamstrings or the inside hamstrings. Sore. Sore in there. So that's where we're suspecting a little bit of some issue going on. All right, any other soreness through there? Good. So we're looking for two major types of injuries. A mid-substance injury, which is in the actual muscle belly itself, or an insertional injury, where the actual muscle attaches or inserts into. So now for Ben here, we're suspecting a little bit of an inside hamstring injury. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna start to lengthen it. So Ben, I'm gonna have you flip around onto your back. All right, so now we're gonna go into a passive assessment of the hamstrings and whether or not that's provocative. Usually when you stretch an injured muscle, it's gonna feel pretty bad. So first thing we're gonna do here is I'm gonna take control of the leg. We don't want Ben to have any kind of active contraction here. So we're just trying to assess whether the muscle is reactive to stretching. We're gonna bring him up. You get an immense pain and he starts to point to the spot, that's when you know. When you're generally pretty low like this at about 30 or 40 degrees, that tells you that's a pretty irritable hamstring. If you're able to get the other leg, typically up to about 70, 80 or 90 degrees, it depends on the person's hamstring flexibility, that is telling you that's a little bit less of a reactive hamstring injury. You can also assess passive hamstring length another way. You can bring them up into a little bit of a knee bend and then start to extend there. And Ben points immediately to that inside hamstring and it's pulling. You can also bias it a little bit. You can turn the foot out, do the same thing. Does that feel any better, worse? And do the same thing again. Pull it in, does that feel any better, worse? That can help you get a little bit more specific about the injury. All right. Let's flip around then, and we're gonna take a look at you with some active contraction next. Now one big thing you're looking for a visual perspective, you're always looking to see bruising. Bruising is a good sign that there's been tissue damage and somewhat of the extent of that tissue damage. If it's a low level grade one, you might not even see any bruising, but if you're looking at those grade two or grade three injuries where you're more likely to seek a healthcare uh, professional, what you're looking for is a lot of bruising in either the muscle belly down here or at the tendinal insertions where they come in on the inside, outside of the knee. And if you can expose up there, you can also look there. So next up, we're gonna test active contraction of the hamstrings. 
I like to do it a little bit in the mid range first, and then you can push them into either of the end ranges to really see if it's provocative. So Ben, what I want you to do is I want you to hold your leg here, and I want you to don't or try and push against me while I push you down. Three, two, one, push. Good. And what you're looking for is what is the response there? Do they stop the contraction immediately? Is there pain? Is their body shift away to try and get away from the pain? Um, they will tell you that hurts. We're looking for a couple of things. The quality of the pain, how intense is it, the sharpness. Um, those are all symptoms that you can kind of gauge the intensity of an issue with. Usually when you contract an injured muscle, it's gonna hurt. The extent of that hurt can be dependent on a lot of things, but it gives you a good sign of how serious the injury is. Now you can also take them into a different part of the range of motion. So let's say, Ben, I want you to try this one. Don't let me push it down. Three, two, one, go. And that one might be a little bit more sensitive because we're now you're nearing the lengthening portion of the muscle um, where the hamstring doesn't have as good strength. Um, and so it might be even more provocative there. So if you're kind of debating whether or not you have a higher or a lower one, and the lower one wasn't, or the 90 degree angle wasn't very provocative, you try them at either 30 degrees down lower or you bring them into their fully shortened position all the way up here. And you really try that one too, push. And really what you're looking for is again, signs and symptoms. Bruising, swelling, pain, symptom severity, um, and then any other issues like that.